You know, Downsview, in these days, as our COVID restrictions are slowly coming down, as the vaccine numbers are skyrocketing, as we have seen announcements for schools reopening this fall and for some of the other things that haven't been open for a while, they're continuing to, to open. And, you know, there's, there's something reassuring, isn't there, about the fact that, you know, God really is still at work. And, and these days, we, we need reassurances, don't we? It's been a long time. We've been 18, 19, 20 months, depending how we're counting, uh, basically since March, almost two years ago now, that we have been shut down to one degree or another. And churches have been affected, uh, families and their personal lives have been affected, people's employment has been gravely affected in many ways. Our, our whole tourism industry has taken a punch. There's all kinds of professional sporting activities that employ tens of thousands of people that have been out of work. And the, the TV revenues that come from that has been down. And there's all kinds of different things that of course have been really affected. And because of that, you know, as we're starting to get in some ways back towards some, I don't want to say normal because I'm not sure that, that what we were doing is either normal or, or, or the kind of thing that should be desired, but you know what I'm saying. We're getting back to the way things were in some ways, and, and there's not, not everything's good about that. I think we've learned an awful lot of lessons in this past year, and one of those is that sort of reassurance that God really is at work through and in the midst of all of these things. You know, in that beautiful passage in Isaiah 46, is it about eight, nine, ten that, that that God has has determined and declared the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things which have not yet come to pass. And surely He has spoken it. Surely He will do it. Surely He has planned it. He will bring it to pass. And it's this monumental passage to the people in Israel who were being being told that you know if they didn't return to the Lord, there there really was coming judgment. And as we know. Hundred years later, Jeremiah was saying the same things, but essentially saying it's too late now because you ignored Isaiah, you've ignored the situation, and here come the Babylonians. And yet, in the midst of both of those letters, you have this reassurance that God's going to do some pretty severe disciplining and some really severe times are going to come upon them. But you know, the Lord's still at work, and the Lord is not going to abandon his people or his promises, and he is going to provide for them in, in all the ways that they really do require. It's hard for us to believe sometimes that we require discipline, isn't it? That we require correction, that we require uh, times of, of going without so that we really will uh, learn what it is to appreciate when we, we have it. And I think a lot of us have learned that lesson, haven't we? The value of being in a church family and being around our, our biological families. And, you know, it's, it's as we said on Sunday morning, sometimes you feel like you're praying and you say amen and it's still raining. <laughs> it's raining outside now. But, you know, there's, again, something about the, just to dwell on the fact that God's at work and God has promised sort of corporately as in Israel, uh, that passage in, in Isaiah 46 and uh, again a century later when Jeremiah comes along with Jeremiah 29 11 that when you know these 70 years are over then you will seek me and then you will pray and why I will hear you and I will deliver you and because or for that verse 29 11 I know the plans I have for you and their plans not to harm you their plans to cause you to prosper with a bring you a hope and, and and encouragement and delight and and there's that whole forward looking it's interesting to me that in many ways that's really what Jesus was doing as he made what we think of at Easter time that triumphal entry it's in the gospel of John chapter 12 that it happened to be looking at in verse 12 that the next day the large crowd had come to the feast they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem so they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel, right? Hosanna literally means, oh, save, or come save, or in our vernacular, please save us. Here he comes, come to save us. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written in verse 15, fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. And his disciples did not understand these things at first. But Jesus, when Jesus was glorified, 
Then they remembered that these things had been written about him and been done to him. And often that's our case, isn't it? We, we don't see what God's doing at the time. We don't see the significance and the meaning and the, the deep meaning and the long lasting effects of what God's doing. Jesus was coming into Jerusalem riding on a very humble animal, uh, this, this donkey, and it says, Behold, your king is coming. It didn't say your king is here. Could, could have said that. There he is. No, no, your king is coming. And I think part of the implication there is that all that the king is bringing with him is coming. It's on its way that the king is coming to rule over a kingdom. And it's on its way in. And here it comes, but it's not here completely yet. And, and everything that needs to be accomplished is not done yet. And I, and I know, I, I feel like the rest of you enough already. We've been waiting long enough. We've been enduring so much. We've been experiencing such hardship. We've been dealing with situations before. And, and, and we can give in to doubt, can't we, sometimes? Well, how faithful is God's faithfulness? How everlasting are His everlasting promises? Is His eternal declarations really eternal? Are they really going to last? Because, boy, it, you look around and I prayed and I say amen and it's still raining. Brothers and sisters at Downsview, one of the important things that we need to continue to remind ourselves of is not the perceived or preferred promises of God, but the revealed promises of God. We don't get to decide on them or make them or remake them to our either the way we'd like them to happen or the timing in which we'd like them to happen. We seek to trust that God is bringing all that he has promised to do to pass. Rejoice, O Zion, your king is coming. And now we're on the other side of this. We're, we're in those last days, that last redemptive epoch between the time Jesus ascended into heaven and the time that he's going to return in glory. And whatever that looks like and how we're exactly that's going to happen, we can talk about that. But the fact of his returning and coming back is something that we need be in no doubt of and perhaps need a little bit of reassurance in and go back to the Lord and say, Lord, just help us to believe your revealed promises that you really are going to care for and take care of your people. And in so doing, you really are going to put your value and your worth on display. Friends, if you'd like to join us tonight online or in person here at the church, we'll have our prayer meeting here at seven o'clock this evening. Not, um, not outside we'll be inside it looks like because it's raining out but seven o'clock tonight or if you can't be here then tune in where you're watching uh, these videos normally but go to our facebook page probably the easiest just to go to my personal facebook page and lord willing we'll we'll live stream that prayer meeting for you there as well okay friends cheers